Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We are going to talk today about a Gibson 50s J45, about uh, three and a half months after I've purchased this. And it's been about that long since I got it. And when I first bought it, I had uploaded a video to YouTube and did a review on it. And while it recorded beautifully, the, the sound wasn't translating up where you could hear it if it's just you and the guitar. You could put it on a mic and you could lay, lay a track down and it sounded great, but you wasn't really getting that holding and playing the guitar. And I don't know if anybody on the channel has ever experienced that before, but it's the first time I've experienced it. Most guitars that I have purchased uh, from guitar stores, you have to remember they're hanging on the wall. So my other J45 two other J45s uh, had been, well, one of them anyway, had the standard had been sitting uh, there at uh, the guitar store and people were playing it every day, right? People would come in, take it out and, and play on it. So it had, it had kind of opened up some and it was a beautiful sounding guitar. Uh, I had ordered a Gibson Regal, uh, which is uh, quite a nice guitar and it sounded very well from the get-go uh, now i'd ordered it new so it hadn't been played in and still sounded really really good but i think the expectation of a guitar being at its peak when you buy it online uh, might be a little much so i've got a suggestion about that and that is if you order a new guitar online at least give the guitar a little time playing it to see if anything changes, because you never would have convinced me that in three months this guitar would have opened up in a way that was pleasing to the ear without having to record it and listen back. Just you and the guitar, the thing sounds great now. Uh, and I don't think it's as good as it's going to be. Now, a couple of things. Uh, I pulled the first video I did because I had too many in, incorrect things in that video about this guitar, and I don't think that's fair to Gibson. I corrected it in the description, but I went back and listened to that video yesterday, and uh, a lot of people don't read the description, so it's just not fair to Gibson. So I took the video down, and... Uh, and I wanted to do another video on it. So this one's got the closed back 50s retro Cluson style of tuners with the cream buttons. Kind of takes you back in time a little bit to that era. It's got a chunky C neck. I'm going to call that chunky. And uh, I would imagine that the finish is probably more like they would have done it in the 50s. Because everything about the 50s spec on this guitar is cosmetic. The inside bracing of the guitar, uh, I have been told, is the same as a J45 standard. And I looked in there, and I, I believe they're right about that. I don't see any difference in the bracing. The orange label that you see inside this guitar is, it's fascinating. Every large corporation, you know, divisions do things differently. So if you went to Epiphone and you saw an orange label, you're going to see that orange label on either a inspired by Gibson J200, J45, Hummingbird. All three of those inspired by Gibson lines have this orange sticker in it. 
And that is their way of differentiating uh, that they were done there in the custom shop. And not to mention the factory code is in that for those guitars. So you're not going to see them coming out of the Indonesian factory that produces the, let's just say the cheap line of guitars that Epiphone's known for. You're only going to see that on the Inspired by Gibsons as of this, the time of this video. Now, Gibson, on the other hand, will put these orange labels in guitars that are, let's call them specialty releases. Now, they may release them for the next 20 years, I don't know, but it is a cosmetically specced 1950s. And so you're going to see the orange label in there. It's not a custom shop build. It's built in Bozeman, Montana in the Gibson factory. And it was not done in the custom shop. And I will say that uh, this one is a 2020. But this guitar sat in the corner for a while. After the gentleman in that I bought it from in Joplin, Missouri. After he bought it, he pull the pick guard because it's a rather large pick guard takes up a lot of real estate remember back in the 50s these guitars had pretty sizable uh, pick guards on them so that that takes up a lot of real estate on this wood and this wood is your soundboard so he pulled that and i'm glad he did because i i would have done it anyway I think the sound has really begun to come alive in this guitar and as I mentioned I'm I'm surprised by how much it's opened up just in the last few months so I'm gonna have to uh, go back and say give these things a chance if you order them online don't don't assume that that's how your guitar is gonna sound when you first strum it and I would say play it in just a little bit because the quality of the build is so good that it's, it's worth the time and the effort to try to play these guitars in a little bit and try to draw that sound out of it and get it to open up. I just, uh, I love the way this thing sounds now and I think it sounds absolutely beautiful. And I think it's only going to get better with time. So I have taking this guitar down from sale and uh, I'm going to hang on to it. I'm not going to get rid of this guitar. I'm going to keep it. It's going to stay with me. So the Gibson 50s J45 is a keeper. It's a keeper. So for those of you that saw the first video, all I can ask you to do is for, forgive me for getting some information wrong and, and really having no patience with the guitar. You know, when I look on the wall over here, I've got, uh, not on the wall, but up against the wall, uh, I've got, uh, how many of these guitars are actually brand spanking new, so, uh, that I bought new, and I would say maybe three, four, four guitars, maybe brand new, that I've got in the arsenal at the moment, and they sounded really good, straight, you know, uh, from ordering them online but you know folks that's not always going to be the case and those guitars have actually opened up and begun to sound even better uh, but they sounded good when i got them and to be fair to gibson this did sound good when when i when i got it but you couldn't tell it unless you were recording it because the sound while you had the resonance and you could kind of hear a little bit of it, you it wasn't as pronounced as I'm accustomed to hearing from a Gibson, particularly a Gibson J45. 
But now... I can hear it a whole lot better. It's and it and it's not you know my ears haven't I haven't done anything different with my ears. So I think uh, I think it just needed to be played. I think that's the answer. It needed to be played. Folks, there you have it. That's the Gibson 50 Spec J45. Now, this guitar still doesn't sound as good as my J45 standard that I had. It hasn't opened up to that point. But based off of the fact that the sound has really begun to open on the guitar, I'm going to say it's going to get there. Enough so that I pulled it and I'm not selling it. So I hope the video helped you out. If you're looking at these guitars, they are very much worth the spend on them. And they are certainly uh, uh, beautiful guitars, and they're extremely well built uh, there in the Bozeman, Montana factory. It's another great guitar by Gibson is about all I can say about it. If you like slope shoulders, this is it. If not, pick up a Gibson Hummingbird. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. God bless. We'll see you next time.